The next section we're going to be working on is the ears. So some nice curly fur here. I'm just going to start with once again making the graphite pencil outlines a little bit more faint so that they're not showing through. However, as it is black fur, it's not the end of the world really if you do leave some because let's face it, dark colours are going to cover it up. It's only really a big concern if it was lighter fur. But I think I probably mentioned that earlier on anyway. Um, so as you can see, I have done quite a few outlines here to kind of mark out the main clumps of hair. And when you are doing longer fur, it is really important to think of it as clumps of fur not individual hairs quite as much um, otherwise it's just not going to look quite right but it's up to you how in detail you go with your outline when it comes to marking out the clumps of hair when it comes to long fur i don't um get too fixated on making everything exact because you look at the reference photo and it could be one gust of wind and then the fur is completely different so as long as you get the general gist i have done quite a few outlines just to kind of follow it relatively closely but i don't mind if it does end up looking a little bit different so first things first base layers um i don't want to lose the outlines so i do need to be quite careful here in fact before i go in with the lightest color the initial color i was going to go to go for was warm gray one from the polychromos range. Um, I always do it up here as well. Bear with. But as I said, I don't want to lose it. So I'm actually going to go in with the warm grey three, I think, first. Yeah, warm grey three. And I'm going to use that just to mark out the main shadows so we don't lose these main areas. So we'll start at the top and then work down very roughly marking it out. We are in the very early stages here, so it doesn't need to look perfect. But I'm kind of just following the direction of the fur and filling in where I can see some slightly darker parts. And any flyaway hairs as well. And then this bit here is lighter, so I'll leave that but then under here is darker. So yeah, just leaving the lightest parts empty for now. It will look quite unimpressive at this initial stage, but do not worry. The key thing with curly hair like this is just to be really, really patient. Well, that's, that's a fact with all drawing really. And it's quite dark kind of in here as well. There's little shadows uh, kind of in between clumps of hair. So they're the main bits I'm filling in. In fact on this pale bit here there is a little bit of a shadow there. And a little bit here. You'll find there will be some sort of shadow along most of your pencil, initial pencil markings. I'm just going to make these pencil markings a little bit more faint as well. There we go. Just so I can make the flyaway hairs purely from coloured pencil rather than graphite. Also, sorry if I have like made the camera jog at all. Um, I'm actually wearing a cap and it keeps knocking it. I'll try not to do that anymore. Or I might just take the cap off in a moment. It's quite 
quite a few darker shadows through this bit. I say each stage is going to take quite a lot of time. Also, you may hear Tess herself groaning in the background. She's just been asleep on the bed next to me, but she seems to have woken up. So any strange noises, they are probably from her. Um, something else I was going to mention, because we've worked on the face already and now moving to the left, if you want to, it could be worth just popping a bit of paper over what you've done. I may do that at some point, but my hand isn't really resting right on it. It's kind of resting just to the right of it. So I might be OK, but it depends on your hand positioning. But I would recommend it so that you're not getting your natural hand oils onto what you've already done. You'll notice some bits are a bit darker, some bits a bit lighter with this pencil. So I'm just adding more pressure where it's a more dark shadow. I'm just moving away from it with lighter pressure. So very much the same idea as what we've done so far. We're just kind of doing a different type of pencil stroke in a way. There are some nice swirly little bits of hairs on, I keep getting my plurals wrong, there are some nice swirly hairs to the edge of the ear, so we want to get the shape right there. A little bit in here. All of this is going to be so much blacker towards the end. seems to be quite a lot of movement down this bit here there's kind of a section of hair that is blowing across the rest so it'll be really nice to capture that bit just makes the overall picture look more animated so if you are able to add a bit of well if it's in the photo then great it's nice to it's easy to be able to copy it hopefully but even if it wasn't it's quite nice to try and add a bit more character to things add a bit more movement it really does make the difference rather than just being rigid hair because that isn't quite as realistic and i'd say getting that kind of movement and character in long fur especially that really is a priority over getting the exact layout nice dark shadow in this bit here I do know that later on the slice tool is definitely going to come in handy with adding more wispy flyaway hairs. So do make sure you've got that handy for a little bit later on. Almost there with this first step, just got the last few bits down the bottom of the ear. This is where it all gets a bit more fiddly and messy because you've got lots of um, strands going in different directions. In fact, there are a few graphite marks at the bottom here that I did miss when I was rubbing them out slightly, so I'll do that now.
last few little strands and then we can move on to applying the base layers properly. There we go. Oh, I missed a tiny little bit up here, bear with. So it's a shadow kind of in there. There we go. So yeah, as you can see throughout that, I've very much kind of gone in as if I was just straight away drawing the hairs, um, but focusing on where there's shadow and anywhere more highlighted. I've just left, left quite empty for the moment. Um, but it, straight away you can kind of see the overall shape of the ear and how everything is going to be laid out, which is perfect. However, we're now going to move on to a slightly easier step. Um, warm grey one is what I'm going to use first. Um, so I'd say that is the lightest colour I can see. And I'm just going to use small circular motions. Well, I say small. They're not as small as they could be, but I'm pretty much just going to try and fill in the whole ear but keeping a fairly consistent pressure so that we've got a nice consistent layer of this colour throughout. If you kind of work towards the ends where there are hairs going off, then it might be quite good to actually draw them as hairs because you don't really want to be doing circular motions right here at the edge, otherwise you're going to lose that texture, which we do not want but on the inside you can just colour it in pretty much but as you can see even though we are colouring it in you can still see the main layout from what I did on the previous step So there's definitely going to be quite a lot of blues in there. So the main light blue, again, I'll be using is light ultramarine. Um, and then I'll also, when working a little bit darker, use the mauve um, to give a slightly deeper bluey purple look on some places. But we'll start with the lighter blue first. We can, we can pretty much just cover the whole thing again with this colour, but keep it quite light. We can always add more later on and we don't want to be losing our marked out shadows just yet. In fact, it already is quite hard to see it in a way there. So I'm actually not going to do that. That is one thing you'll find with me. I never know exactly how things are going to go until I'm doing it. So I'm making the, the decision now. I need to mark out those shadows a bit more before we proceed. So Let's do that with the mauve. Let's get straight in with those blue tones. So similar to what we did before, just getting those main shadows marked out. It's gonna look a little bit wacky to begin with, being all blue, but that's okay. It will look normal once it's done, I promise. Um, but you really do wanna take advantage of all the lovely colors you can see in Tessa's fair definitely not just black there's so much blue definitely a bit of green in there as well so we'll probably add a little bit of that shortly i'm not going to cover things up as much with this one it's just the main shadows i want to keep there just so we know where the clumps of fur are going to be going Thank you. 
This is definitely taking a bit less time than the initial stage because I'm not doing it quite as detailed. Just these main shapes we want to keep. Okay, now let's go back in with the light blue because hopefully we won't lose the shadows quite as much now. And as I said before, I'm just keeping very light pressure. It's just a hint of blue at this point. We can probably use some of these extra colours to help blend a little bit later on and that will help make them a bit richer. I'm going to add a bit of green at this stage so it's the earth green that I've been using throughout this drawing there are just some hints of it in some places um you know that bit that's kind of flying across I can definitely see some green uh towards the roots of that so let's add that there a little bit up here and again it doesn't really matter if it's not exactly in the right place as long as you're kind of getting the general gist of what, what all the colours are. And is that the one I just did up here? I think it is. And probably some more down here. Okay, that is all good. So we're going to do our first lot of blending now. I am going to be using warm grey one for the first lot of blending so it's a nice light colour but it's not so light that it's white um because that could potentially make it a bit too pale because bear in mind we want to get some nice rich black tones in there later on so i'm going to be using harder pressure and i'm just pretty much covering the whole lot in and this probably if you haven't done this before it probably does seem like we're just yeah we're just coloring it in it doesn't look particularly professional or impressive at all just yet but you must trust the process as i always say and most parts of the drawing are going to look a bit silly at some point but then suddenly it will all come together well you'd hope you hope that is the case And I'd say I'm using kind of medium to hard pressure. In fact, it probably is quite hard. Um, but I'm not going all out. I'm not using 100% strength because that would just ruin the paper. But it's enough that things are starting to merge together a little bit. Again, just be careful around the edges here. We may potentially do a bit of blending with a white pencil towards the edges at some point, um, just so it's a little bit more delicate. Now the top here.
it's starting to hurt my hand a little bit now. Quite a lot of movement going on. I'm still colouring fairly, not carelessly, I was going to say the word carelessly, but I'd say that's a bit of a strong word. Um, but at the bottom here, I'm not being overly careful because it's just going to be black shadows in between the clumps of fur anyway, so it doesn't need to be super neat on that part. It's more the edges where there's going to be the white background. That's where we don't want to be making mistakes. Perfect. So I haven't blended it to the point that there's literally no tooth of the paper left. It's just kind of been a bit of a gentle blend at this point. Um, and once I've added a few more layers, we will try and make sure all of that pencil tooth goes away. Next step, you probably guess, is to kind of mark out the shadows again. And I do find when doing long hair, this is very normal. Long hair or long fur, whatever you want to call it. Because um, you're constantly kind of marking things out, deepening the shadow, and then working on other bits and then going back to that. So yeah, I just need to keep persevering with that bit really. So let's pick a shadow to begin with. Let's start from here. A nice sharp pencil is ideal. We are gonna be taking it a little bit more seriously now though, just so we can get the texture right and directions of the fur all correct. So kind of draw individual hairs at this point using harder pressure right in the shadow like that. See, that's quite dark. And then as we move away, kind of decrease the pressure. There's going to be a lot of flicking motions. And there's that little highlighted bit of fur there. And you'll find that the different clumps of fur, they kind of come around each other. So we've got the shadow here, then we've got this very fine clump coming out. There'll be a bit of shadow on it where it's emerging and then it will gradually get lighter as it comes out. So bear that in mind to keep it looking nice and natural. And there will be some darker shadows kind of between the peaking between the strands. So do the odd um, harder pencil stroke. It's when I get to this stage where I kind of start to lose the exact structure. I try and follow it where I can, but I will just go with the flow and do whatever makes the most sense really. And as I said earlier, just focusing on the overall movement and character. Just trying to keep the overall curl of this strand, well not strand, clump. And the shadow is a lot deeper kind of behind. There's this paler bit here and then the shadows deeper just as they come out. So let's just fill that in a little bit and then it'll gradually become lighter as it emerges. And focusing on that pattern is what is gonna make it look 3D. Probably a slightly harsh, shad harsh shadow there, so I'll just make the um, transition a bit better. Tess is now snoring, so do ignore that. There we go, so that bit is already looking quite 3D. It feels like it's coming out towards us. So that is kind of what we want throughout, really. So let's start working on another clump. <laughs> so I'm mainly just making sure the overall shape of it is here. And it kind of curls that way. Uh, 
and it does emerge from underneath this bit here so this is going to be dark in this bit and then it's going to be dark at the root of this clump And then there are other clumps coming out from under this shadow here. So we'll start to mark those out. I say the main aim is we don't want it to look like a bunch of worms. Um, and I think that can quite quite often happen when you first draw spaniel ears or anything like this because you almost make the clumps too rigid and too separate yes they are separate clumps of fur but a lot of the time they almost blend into each other so do bear that in mind like here has the capability of becoming too worm like so i'm going to be very careful and make sure I've got nice gradual transitions between shadow and highlight and that is what is going to make it remain soft and realistic. So I'm finding just following the direction of the fur is the easiest way here. And don't worry if our ears do look quite different, especially if we're not staying particularly um, rigid and exact with where each clump of fur is as long as you're happy with how yours is coming out doesn't matter if the overall layout is slightly different So I'm going to go back up and work more from this bit now. So it's quite dark here. And then there should be a lighter bit, which we're going to mark out. So this bit here that I haven't coloured in just now, that's the lighter strand. So we'll leave that pretty much empty. And then just make a few little separate clumps around here. But again, keeping the transitions nice and soft. It does get to a point where it's quite hard to, hard to describe what I'm doing here. Um, if this is your first ear like this, then honestly, do not put yourself down if it doesn't quite turn out how you like it. I had to draw many spaniel ears to get the idea and I, I could still improve on them. They are one of those things I think I could still do better. They're not the easiest. So again, we've got the main shadow in here, clump of fur here, so it's gonna start off nice and dark inside. And then as it emerges, gradually, decreasing the pressure on the pencil so the shadow gets gradually lighter like so definitely isn't quite the same shape as what it is in the photo but that's okay the wind might have just blown this bit should remain fairly light apart from the odd little line of shadow peeking through the hairs but still just following the direction of the fur hair seems to be working quite nicely there are some quite dark bits here 
So just really focus on the di different directions of the fur as they flick away from the head. And then it stays quite light on the top. So just make sure I've got enough hair going up. Uh, so I'll follow the direction of the fur, doing lots of pencil strokes, but keep it quite light. And eventually that will merge quite nicely into what we've done over here. shadow in here a lot of the shadows are almost triangular shaped like they're going to have a point to them and then the hairs are going to go off into multiple directions normally kind of two different directions so try and notice like any patterns you see um, and see what regularly occurs when you are drawing these different sections because then you kind of know what to expect and what sort of shapes to look out for. Definite dark shadow here. Again, thinking about that triangular shape, so the point is up here. It's kind of like a curvy triangle. And in the point, that's going to be your darkest bit. And then as you work out, gradually decreasing the pressure. And focusing on what direction things are going. And I'm finding this shadow here is a little bit more complex than the others. It kind of goes off into lots of different bits along here. But again, because we're by the edge, just be careful not to go too mad with your pencil strokes. I mean, the hairs coming off, they are quite dark, but we can always add more darkness to them a bit later. Uh, but to keep them looking nice and soft and natural, just almost flick the pencil away while keeping a reasonable amount of control so that you don't flick all the way across the paper. Just deepening the shadow here a little bit further. And then along here, just gonna darken that shadow a little bit more. This bit here, I don't think actually I wanted the line to go that way, but that's okay. There's still so many more layers to go that just continue as if you hadn't made that error. and it will soon kind of dissolve into the drawing. It seems it's quite a large clump here that's following a similar course. There we go, and kind of behind this flyaway bit, it starts to curve back in the other direction like so. 
Just don't do pencil strokes too hard over this flyaway bit because otherwise you'll lose sight of it. That's pretty much the right shape there and then there's more that kind of you can see this curl comes around and then back that way that's kind of how I'm seeing it anyway I'm gonna use some harder pressure here just to get the main shadow of this clump of fur. There we go. Right, I'm just trying to see how this bit goes. So this bit's come down here. And then it kind of disappears under a cowl that goes like that. So that bit comes down and disappears under there. But then there's still other curls coming out and around. And just use like the previous darker bits, you can see the mauve underneath. I'm just using that as a rough guide as to where the general direction is going. Now this clump seems to get quite dark towards the bottom, so add some extra pressure to reflect that. If in doubt though, do slightly less, you can always add more later. Okay, there's another pretty deep shadow down here. Say so the tip is here and it goes round and yeah, then there's some other bits of hair here that curve round. I am actually just gonna sharpen my pencil. I know it's still quite sharp, but I want the tip to be even more even better at applying the details. So I'll just go and do that. Okay, so that should have a little bit more oomph to it now that it's sharper, definitely does. I do actually just want to darken some shadows up here slightly. I've just noticed that they could be a little bit better. So I'm following the curve that way. not looking quite as natural as it could do but I know it will look better once I've got some more layers in there so do not worry there we go that's a bit better perfect so nice hard pressure on the inside of this bit but still doing individual pencil strokes just to um, replicate the actual hairs because there is still some texture in there like so this bit kind of carries on around quite delicately so just a few pencil strokes to build up colour and texture and then it continues to curve back the other way 
<laughs> Tess still snoring away. Yeah, curves back the other way down here. And it's almost like one clump that does it. It's just this big shadow has kind of, it's kind of peeking through. It's basically just parted itself on a small section. Well, quite a large section. But it's quite dark here. I'd say it's almost a bit of a shadow that comes across this top bit. So we're actually very close now on this um, particular step and as it builds I do find it gets easier and easier. The worst part of starting an ear like this is the beginning, it's just getting started. But as I said the more layers you build the easier it's just, it, it, the easier it is just to follow uh, what you've done previously over and over again until you've got enough layers down and until you've got enough detail. Okay, there's another little shadow in here. I'll just mark out roughly where it's going to go. So yeah, it's dark. This is kind of the top of the shadow triangle here. then it gets lighter as we work up here but you probably see there's the odd darker bit and it's emerging out from under this one so nice and dark in the crease here and then gradually getting lighter as we work out and then it's curving back downwards And this bit down here, it kind of works into that same bit. Like so. A few more little clumps down here. This bit kind of goes under like that. And then there's like another clump a bit lower just behind it. So darker shadow as it comes out. And again, this bit is all going to look a bit more natural at the end once all the body is done underneath. So you may notice at this stage there is still a lot of tooth of the paper showing through. So we do need to get things blended together quite a lot more um, and we could also do with making the colours a bit richer so we did apply some blues and some greens earlier on it's actually quite hard to see that now but that's okay we can always add more but first I'm going to use warm grey one to blend things together further I know we did that a little bit earlier but often you do need a few blending sessions to get everything how you want it to be and this time round, you should actually see a bit more happen, especially if you look at how it's working here on this clump of fur. Beautiful, looking nice and smooth. You may find kind of following the direction of the fur is the most effective way now. Just like so. And the contrast in the overall depths of the shadow will reduce 
but that's fine because we've still got loads more layers to go so we can darken things again a little bit later but basically we just want the whole lot to look lovely and smooth i am using quite hard pressure as i always say it's not with like full force i could press harder if i wanted to but just as hard as i need to press in order to make things look smooth and for the tooth of the paper to start disappearing so that is what you're looking out for So we're going to have to be quite careful again as we head towards the edge of the paper. So I would go over it with a bit more pressure but kind of flick towards the edge. And then when we get back into the shadows, going back to harder pressure. And then flicking it out again as we work towards the edge because we want any hairs at the edge to look light and fluffy starting to get a sore hand now it's always these steps where you're having to constantly put harder pressure on the pencil that's where it gets a little bit more tiring but it will be so worth it in the end so keep going So we're just coming to the final um, ends of the hair hairs as we get to the bottom of the ear. So on these edge ones here, similar to what I was doing up higher up. So fairly hard pressure, but flicking the pencil strokes away from the ear. But on the bits that overlap the shoulder, we don't need to worry about the transition quite as much because we're going to be drawing more fur around it anyway so you can kind of allow it to go slightly over the end that won't be a problem by 
I've actually missed this bit here at the top, so we'll just do that. So that's that bit done. Now let's build up some colours a little bit more. So I'm going to use the mauve. I'm going to focus on the darker shadows. I'm basically just going to be using it to start and re-darkening any bits that have got a bit lighter from the blending. It will look a little bit out of place. It will look a bit too much with the vibrance of this colour initially, but we're going to be using more um blacks and stuff a little bit later so that will help tone it down a little bit but we just want to get these nice rich tones in there and as you can see hopefully i'm just doing individual pencil strokes if i'm drawing the individual hairs again quite similar to when i did um the shadows before i did the last lot of blending And as I move away from the darkest shadows, I'm doing similar pencil strokes, but gradually decreasing that pressure as I move away. Because as I mentioned earlier, we want nice soft gradients. So that's gonna stop the clumps of fur looking like individual worms. It's gonna show individual clumps, but still have a softness about it. We want it to look nice and natural. So this little tuft up here, the shadows are actually quite dark in there. We haven't got anywhere close to achieving that contrast just yet on this section, but I'm confident we will get there, especially when we start using the black pencil. But because it does get quite dark, we can afford to use plenty of this colour. And I'm just using this colour gently um, as I move the fur in towards the forehead that we've done previously. It's quite a dark section, so again, I'll be using some black pencil on that later on. Thank you. 
almost there, last little section along here. There we go. So we have pretty much got the same values there. We've got the same layout of highlights and contrasts, highlights and shadows, sorry. Um, the same contrast between those two things, but we've got some more colours coming in, which is just what we want. Just going to take that a little step further by going in with light ultramarine. So we do really want to be focusing on the texture now, seeing as we're coming to the later end of the layers. So everything does want to be pretty neat, um, but I just want to get some more light blue streaks in there. So one clump of fur at a time. I'm just kind of going over the shadows that I've just applied. won't necessarily be covering the whole thing but just where a little bit of extra blue looks like um, it could be needed. if you look at the reference photo pretty much all the highlights on the ear do have a blue tint to them so this blue will be um, making an appearance in most locations I'm not using as much pressure as I was with the mauve, um, which is the one we just used previously. I'm using slightly lighter pressure this time around. Just enough to get those blue tints in there. So we're going to be focusing on the highlighted areas a little more. I'm going to be making use of um, my white pencil. Um, I've got the Caran Dash Luminance white pencil here. Lovely and soft, so it's going to help um, blend and smooth out those highlights a little bit more. So we're just focusing on the lightest parts on the clumps of fur. I'm just following the direction of the fur. And it's just going to lighten up some bits. Just try and avoid the darker shadows because we don't want to make those too light and we want to save any remaining paper tooth. Even though it looks like it's all blended out, there is still a little bit of grip there, but we want to save that for um, the final dark layers. So just focus on the highlights for this. Follow the direction of the fur, really try and get the feel for the direction and the texture and the character. Imagine a gust of wind blowing through it. Kind of just have that feeling as you work through. This white pencil is also going to be good at blending out these outside hairs because it's a nice light pencil. You can't really see it on the paper when it's not uh, being used on top of other colours. Um, so you can keep fairly hard pressure on top of it as you flick it over the existing pencil. 
and it's just going to squish it into the paper a little bit more, soften those edges, make it a bit more natural. So on this main tuft up here, this top bit is highlighted, so I'll be using some white pencil there. But other than that, I'm just going to be using it to help blend out the outer hairs. There we go. And that bit there. I wish there was more that I could tell you what to do here, but I have literally said all I can about what I'm doing. It really is another case of just having a go, getting a feel for it. It's probably going to take some trial and error for you to get this right, and it's going to take some practice for it to feel entirely natural. But try and copy my motions best you can. few more hairs at the edge here so just going to be going over those again flicking the pencil out Just little section, this little section here that's looking a bit less natural. So I'm just going to add a few hairs with this light pencil. Using the slice tool later on, on this sort of bit here where you've got flyaway hairs, should hopefully really help with those final details. that should do for that bit we're now going to be moving on to the black it's time to go in with the final shadows and I know it probably looks like it's nowhere near done at the moment but this bit is going to um, make a huge difference um, and if anything doesn't look quite right if any further colors need to be added or anything like that then we can always go back and do that but let's start at the top where the main focus is going to be the deepest, darkest shadows with plenty of pressure on the pencil, individual pencil strokes flicking out of those deep shadows, gradually decreasing the pressure, making your transitions nice and gradual and soft. So let's start with this little bit in here. And you can already see that contrast. It's so satisfying, this bit, I find. And because we've got lots of pencil on the paper it should just glide over the top which feels really nice so i'm using quite a light pressure now down this bit but 
but then you see this shadow down here i'm going to increase the pressure again a little bit there sometimes i kind of go back and forth a little bit if it's easier so yeah a bit more pressure here not too much though doing a bit more in this crease here but then as i move away just a few little strands there's a really nice highlight going along there so i don't want to disturb that i might just do a few strands on the other side of it so take note of that if there are some really nice highlights leave them be but give them even more effect by darkening the areas around it just a little bit though So this is the deepest part of the shadow here, so I'm using harder pressure and then decreasing the pressure as I come out and making sure I follow the direction of the fur, so the curve round. Okay, so that's your first little clump of fur done there. I just need to straighten out that shadow a little bit. There we go. And it's dark right in here as well. Then we've got this nice highlighted bit of fur here. So I'm just going to flick the pencil a little bit into that section. But not so much that it disappears. And building up the shadow in that root a little bit more. There we go. So we'll move on to this bit up here. Again, fairly decent amount of pressure here. And right at the top here where the root of the hairs disappear inside or underneath. But flicking the pencil and decreasing the pressure as we move away. And it is again very much going to be that same sort of technique throughout. And just making sure you're allowing enough of the blues and stuff underneath to appear through um, where it's needed. Another dark shadow here. Decreasing the pressure gently as I move to the left of it. There we go. Deep shadow here. Plenty of pressure. Just trying to figure out how this bit of hair goes so it kind of goes like that so this clump of hair kind of stops here so therefore there's kind of a behind clump here so that bit needs to be a bit darker like so and we've got this shadow here it kind of has a root going all the way down the middle and it flicks out to the side as you work your way down so i've done a bit more pressure in the middle here and then decrease the pressure and flick the pencil away as we head down I'm just trying not to interfere too much with this flyaway bit of hair here. And then same the other way. Flicking the pencil away from the centre, but paying attention to the direction, it does kind of curl back down again.
just making this bit a little bit neater so adding a bit more contrast here perfect so let's finish this top section and um, we'll move on to this little bit here so quite dark shadows in this bit starting dark flicking the pencil out decreasing the pressure and just following the hairs that we've already done and because it's a dark pencil just be really light on the pressure as you move away from the ear you want the hairs to look very uh, kind of gentle and natural it's got a little bit of pencil on the side here so I'm just gonna use my uh, needle eraser a little bit here as well and some bits may look a little bit grainy still you might still be able to see the paper tooth which I can certainly see here but later on I might go back and do a little bit of extra blending but I'll just leave it for the moment same idea here got a lovely highlight coming down so I'm going to be very gentle with that bit barely even put any pencil on it slightly darker tuft here so a tiny bit more pressure and then a lot of this bit is quite dark tuft is quite dark so I'm using extra pressure here getting it nice and black and to make a natural transition from the ear into the face I'm going to do some motions with the pencil that flicks towards the head so that we haven't got any harsh transitions and I will also do it on this lighter part of the tuft just with less pressure And I'll try and make it meet that bit there until it's looking kind of the same. I'm doing quite short individual pencil strokes now as I am doing technically uh, the fur that's on the face at this point. And then it works around here. Now I'm going back the other direction flicking the um, pencil strokes towards the ear. And there's this one little um, tuft that is lighter than the rest. So we just want to make sure that stays there. we're basically creating the shadows that outline that tuft. There we go, we'll go back to that bit in a moment. Let's just finish this area first. So just following the directions of the fur, the way it kind of flicks upwards. And 
then it also flicks to the side and downwards. But I think we will achieve further detail there with the slice tool a bit later. That is pretty much what we need with the black pencil around here. Okay, now let's work back down here. So it's mostly dark in this bit, so harder pressure with the pencil following the direction of the tuft of fur. And then we've got this light bit that goes down and it stops about here. So therefore all of this is going to be quite dark up to that point. And I'd recommend actually doing some small circular motions here with the pencil with quite hard pressure. We want to get a nice dark shadow on this bit. Gradually decrease the pressure as you move to the right. And hopefully that will make the transition into the face a little bit more natural. Maybe do a few pencil strokes for the fur here. 